very much. And also morning to, to DM, I say that. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, and uh, good morning uh, to everybody present this morning, Chairperson and members of the, of the committee. Chairperson, I won't add too much to what the Minister has said. There's nothing to add from the introductory point of view, except to say that uh, transformation is one of the seven outcomes of the department in which uh, gender empowerment is an important component. In this regard, we've appointed a person full-time at the chief director level to deal with gender issues and to drive the gender program in the department. So what I'd like to do, uh, Chairperson, in terms of our response to, to dealing with uh, the uh, shelters for victims of gender-based violence, I'd like to ask our chief director uh, responsible for this particular function, Reverend Naledi Stimela, to run with the presentation. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you. Good morning, honorable members. Good morning, minister. Good morning, DM. Good morning, DG. Good morning, everybody this morning. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, the Department of Public Works um, has risen to the occasion by answering to the call to um, have programs that addresses gender-based violence. Um, today, the purpose of this, of this um, meeting today is to brief portfolio committee on progress on the signing of the MOUs with the provinces to ensure the ex expedious opening, opening of shelters for gender-based survivors. Just to give you a little background um, um, of why we are here today, um, the, the the initial call came from the president uh, during the sitting of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces to discuss a possible approach to combat gender-based violence on the 18th of September, 2019. In this joint sitting, it is where uh, departments and everybody was, was challenged to come up with a consolidated program and efforts to combat the gender-based violence. And so all departments were challenged and were, we were mandated to come up with, um, with, with, with programs to assist the sketch. Um, I recall, I, as you may know that uh, during this sitting, it was when the our Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure committed to three very critical uh, areas which are aligned to the mandate of the department. This was first to avail unoccupied state-owned properties to provide shelter to victims of gender-based violence and femicide. The second one was to avail buildings to be utilized for education and awareness through outdoor advertising and signage of partnership in partnership with private sector. And lastly was to create um, job opportunities through EPWP non-state sector program, which, which is a uh, resident in the Department of Public Works, which, um, of which was to support those NPOs that are, are actually working with gender-based violence and victim empowerment programs to support them um, um, with um, participants as well as to, to, to give support to, to those NGOs. But this, as we know that this was initially part of the emergency response action plan, but when after the president signed the the national strategic framework, the national strategic plan on gender-based violence. These um, commitments were now elevated into the national strategic plan as commitments by the department. And so the department aligned itself with these three pillars that we see there, pillar number two, number four, and number five. Um, pillar number two of prevention and rebuilding uh, the social cohesion by availing the state buildings to be utilized for education and awareness through advertising. We aligned that uh, commitment with that pillar number two. And we aligned uh, commitment number four, commitment uh, pillar number four with the availing of unoccupied state owned properties um, to provide shelter for victims. And that is why we are here today. And lastly, we also 
participate in, the, in pillar number five, which is the economic empowerment. Um, as we may know that uh, with this now is elevated in the national strategic plan, we report um, um, to presidency on a weekly basis um, on progress made on this on these three commitments that we made as a department. Uh, the minister signs off the report every week, um, but we report to presidency and the Department of Women on a weekly basis. Um, can you move on to the next slide, please? Um, on, on, on this commitment of availing public buildings, um, we can say that today, public buildings for, for, for prevention messages, the department identified about 171 state-owned buildings which were to be used for, for advertisement of GBV messages. Um, we had to date uh, unveiled one billboard, um, which was going to, to be um, a pilot um, uh, that we did on the 5th of December, 2019 with the Minister of Public Works and Social Development. Um, this exercise um, uh, just has stalled a little bit because of the, um, the the slow uh, bringing into the partnership of the uh, the private sector to participate in this one, so we are kind of currently um, working on a clear strategy um, because we had to go through supply chain processes, understanding and not to um, as well as uh, ensuring that we don't contravene the PFMA uh, when we invite uh, private sector to to participate in this program. So there is currently a strategy that we are. Uh, working one that will be uh, finalized by the 31st of March, which is going to ensure that this um, pillar is, um, is actually uh, pushed uh, in a quicker rate. We have also managed to um, unveil one perimeter wall, uh, a mural and one perimeter wall of Manimbek Police Station in, in, in Cape Town on the 6th of August um, as a drive. But now seeing that there is a need to to do more on this, we have also by the end of um, 31st of, of, of March, we have committed, we already started working on uh, working on other police stations to to the same artwork uh, that that was done in the Manimbek police station. While we are still waiting for for the, the the involvement of the private sector, so this one will be done internally by the department through gender unit. Um, the next slide, please. Currently, we we uh, oh, okay. This slide is this is a sample of the of the billboards that we would like to see around um, that we are working on uh, putting them up with the messages um, that will be uh, easily read and easily transferred. I mean, translated to 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 and made made awareness to the uh, to, to to the public. Um, we will be engaging with GCIS to ensure that we get the relevant messages, the right messages, to assist us with getting the right messages as well as with the Department of Women, so that we can refine our message to actually hit home and get better. Um, but we are working on that one. Can I have the next slide, please? Now the main topic that we are here on about the unveiling, uh, I mean the uh, availing of, uh, of shelters to 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 Department of Social Development. Um, initially, when we the, start, the project started, we there were eighty four state owned properties that were identified, and these properties were mostly the the residential properties that were um, standing vacant or have been underutilized under the asset register of the Department of Public Works. And when we uh, started the exercise, when we reviewed the we re inspected the. The, 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 84, the 83 buildings, we ended up with about 57 because some of them were not in good state. Some of the properties were not in good state. And because we also did this inspection in partnership with DSD, um, where they were able to ascertain the suitability of the properties and they guided the department of which properties would be more relevant for their use. And then we only ended up with about 22 that were confirmed um, by DSD to date. Um, uh, there are some, there are some uh, provinces that have not yet been covered. Um, so we, 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 I can just give you a breakdown of the two properties that have been confirmed. Uh, it is one in the Western Cape, um, six properties were confirmed, 
they were renovated, reconfigured, and repaired according to the specifications of the Department of Social Development. And this, with this the memorandum of understanding was duly signed by the both, uh, Department of Public Works and the Eastern Cape uh, Provincial uh, Pub Public Works on the 7th of October, 2020. Um, just in December now, when they are now working on towards um, uh, occupying the place and operationalizing the place, the Department uh, of Social Development um, uh, came up with a snag list where they see there are a few um, uh, problems in the, in the building. So they made a snag list which was attended to on the, in, in December, and we're still working on it. And, and, and we're still working on it. Uh, uh, by the 22 of February, I think some of, most of the stuff were done, except for there were a few things that have come in uh, that they noticed after uh, the scope of work had already been, been issued. So this will be attended to while um, they are they are they are, they are occupying because they're just minor things like uh, maybe repairing a, a handle on the door uh, in the window. So they are working they are working on it, but um, this, the the MOE have have been signed and they are have already started operationalizing the the, the centers. There there are about six of them in the in in, in the Western Cape. And then in Gauteng, um, there are also six properties that um, that were allocated in Gauteng, one being the, the one at Silver Corp, which is um, now is in operational. Uh, it is a, a command center, GBV command center. Um, it was launched uh, um, last year in November. Um, they have started operating there. Um, and and, and then, uh, then there is five other properties that are still uh, need to be operationalized. Um, the, the MOA have been signed. They have been renovated as well, um, except that obviously when they started wanting to, to come in, now there were just a few things that they noticed that needed to be done. Um, there's also a snack list that, that is, um, have come through that we are working on as um, Department of Public Works. Um, so this is, these ones, the, the MOAs are in place, they have been signed. Um, it's just a matter of now the Department of Social Development operationalizing the, 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 the shelters. Um, yeah, can we move to the next slide, please? Um, with the next, with this next slide, this is the, the site inspections that have been that have been com completed. Uh, last year, we have done Free State, um, which uh, in August, there were nine properties that were visited, but um, only two of those properties were selected as suitable for, for, for the needs of, D, of DSD. Um, in, in, Kwas in Kwasil Natal, they also, we visited also eight properties together with DSD, and two of those um, were selected as suitable as some of needed um, huge renovations, which was going to cost a lot of money, um, which we are going to consider in the next phase once we our funding has been has been confirmed. Um, also, Northern Cape has been done. There's only one property that has been um, selected by DSD. There are only two in the area, and uh, Northern Cape has has, has been an, a problem because um, DSD wanted more. Uh, more, more, more properties um, around Western Cape, whereby we do not have much as the Department of Public Works. But what we've done is that we've engaged um, with the provincial departments, um, Department of Public Works there in the in the Northern Cape, to also provide a, to also provide a list of properties that they could possibly um, donate or possibly avail to 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 DSD. Uh, so we are in the process. We are in the current currently we are in that process now. Um, Mpumalanga, um, they were nine properties, and they all the nine properties were acceptable. They 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 uh, accepted them. Um, with all the sites uh, inspections, we have done reports that and have been submitted to facilities management for costing, and and and, and uh, to do the visibility studies. Uh, already, I, I think we have about 22 visibility studies that are ready, um, that have uh, actually been done, completed. So we are waiting, hoping that in the next financial year, we should be starting with the renovations um, so, so that we can be able to, to, to 
to hand over to the Department of Social Development. Um, and on, on that note, um, because of the, the challenges that we experienced of many, most of the, of the, of the buildings not being uh, suitable, uh, we are engaging as well with the different provinces, as I've already mentioned. And also the minister and the DM, uh, sometime we, may, we met with the, the MECs for the, for, for the, all the MECs through the MinMEC. And this, uh, this proposal has been made to them to also assist to provide those or to avail those, those um, buildings so that we can be able to cover all the municipalities and uh, the, 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 the district uh, municipalities and the, through the district model uh, approach, like the minister have already stated. So we are having those further discussions. And so we, the minister has already explained that we will also be meeting on a weekly basis. We have been meeting actually on a weekly basis with, or together also with DSD to actually try to unblock all, all, all these um, challenges that have been, have been identified. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, before the end of this financial year, because there are some provinces like Northwest, Eastern Cape and, and, and Limpopo that have not yet uh, uh, been attended to, um, we, we have already have dates that have been submitted um, uh, to, to, to go and do the final um, inspections. Uh, what, one of the challenges that we're having to, uh, about confirming the dates was the fact that when we are a big team, um, uh, because it was the Department of Public Works um, and the Department of Social Development, as well as the Provincial Department of Social Development. So we might we find that uh, we're having a challenge of coming up with a, with a, a, a date, a, a common date that we can be able to do these inspections. But we have decided that we are going to use a, a new approach where only the, because the challenge have always been the national offices not being available. Uh, so now we're just going to be dealing directly with the provinces and we're hoping that we'll speed up um, uh, the, the inspections, but that will be done before end of this uh, financial year. Can then have the next one, please? Um, and in summary and conclusion on, on, on this particular um, pillar, which I, is of interest today, um, we, we have noticed our, we have actually learned a lot uh, uh, in the previous uh, phase, um, we have seen where we, we the, the blockages were. Um, there have been, in these meetings that we are, we've been having, there have been discussions also to consider or look at how do we, um, the, the, the approach that we, we, we take uh, on this program, do we continue doing the donation or the lease agreement uh, approach? So these are the issues that we are engaging in uh, together with the provinces so that we come up with a clear uh, strategy for uh, that will, will 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 speed up this the, the process because we realized that one of the the, the challenges of, of signing the MO is was the fact that uh, after the renovations by the Department of Public Works when the the the, the DSD have to sign the the the, the, the lease agreement they had to um, we had to recover the the funds that that were used for for for, for renovations and, and and all that so these were the, the some of the issues that um, kind of made it. Uh, um, going, for us going up and down, trying to come up with an agreement. So now um, with also the issues raised uh, about, um, you know, issues of um, the Dora and the Giyama and how we interpret it or how, uh, how do we renovate, how do we spend money on buildings that are, or on properties that are going to be used for a, for a mandate of, of, of the province. These are the issues that were raised uh, and, and, and how do we actually ensure that this does not come up as, a, as, an, as an audit query. So these are the engagements that you are going to be to clarify the kind of, of approach that you're going to take that is going to ensure that we don't uh, in the long run uh, end up uh, having uh, those audit queries. And lastly, um, it was important that uh, we align ourselves with the economic empowerment pillar in the strategic plan, uh, in the national strategic plan of, of gender-based violence, because uh, it is imperative that uh, uh, even, we cannot just say we'll provide shelters, but we have to come up with an intervention to make sure that we prevent women to get into um, situations or to be vulnerable to gender-based violence. Hence the economic empowerment was very important. 
And so what we have committed on is to, to ensure that we will be facilitating economic opportunities for women entrepreneurs, um, including women living shelters, um, uh, uh, by actually ensuring that uh, uh, that 40% uh, procurement spent awarded would be awarded to women as, as, as the president had, had made that announcement. Um, to date now, to date, we, uh, as, not to date, as at the end of 31st December, we'll only be able to have another report by end of this financial, because it's a quarterly report, um, through supply chain means, through awarding of, of procurement of, of tenders, we have awarded 25, 21% uh, to, to, to designated groups or to women, sorry, uh, specifically. And 20, from the, this 21% is 26 contracts were awarded to contractor uh, women majority owned companies um, to the value of 299 million, 299,170 million um, uh, as, as of the 31st of December. Um, we've only managed to get 21%. This we have engaged with supply chain management. We have engaged with all the branches and all the, uh, to ensure that their procurement plans uh, are reviewed uh, to, to ensure that there are targets for women, youth and people with disabilities. So we are hoping that with this drive, we will be able to, um, with, the, with the next uh, reporting at the end of March, we, we would have uh, made a little bit of improvement from there. But the, the, the main, main, main commitment is that in the next financial year, we will definitely want to reach that 40% and even beyond. Um, this, uh, the mitigation here um, uh, is obviously because uh, the, the minister, I mean, the ministers um, and the countries are, uh, um, commitment on the on the infrastructure drive in, in development drive, um, and also we will be leveraging on the implementation of the gazetted strategic integrated projects, and therefore it means we need to mobilize women. We need to make sure that women are on board and women are benefiting from this infrastructure drive, and that will in a way that we will be contributing towards economic empowerment um, uh, in, in in this country. I thank you. Yes, um, Chairperson, I think we are done with the presentation. There's nothing further to add. So I hand back if the minister wants to add anything, Deputy Minister. Yes, yes, please, uh, Chairperson, through you. Yes, may continue, Minister. Yes, Chairperson, also uh, some, some good news is that we have received, or we are going to receive 15 million rand from the Criminal Assets Recovery Account. It's a national uh, revenue um, fund into which monies and property are deposited following uh, a judicial forfeiture or confiscation order. Uh, and that contribution will go towards the, the renovation of, of the centers. We are also going to engage a chairperson with the newly established private sector solidarity fund to see you know, what funding we can raise from them and how we can work uh, together. Uh, that fund was launched about three weeks ago uh, by the president. So we, we will be engaging with them shortly. But then just, I want to share some lessons learned uh, out of the phase one process, Chairperson and Honorable Members, and, uh, and especially to drive uh, the fight against GBVF more urgently. Before we announce uh, any centers that we um, are going to transfer or lease to, uh, the provinces or municipalities. The lesson that we've learned in the case of the Western Cape, especially, it took, took us months, months, just to get a memorandum of agreement signed. It took us an, more months uh, to, to get the, the, the paperwork done for uh, the lease of the properties uh, to the provincial government. Now, in, in, in the process, uh, we have started uh, to uh, renovate the buildings, uh, to make them ready for handover, but the handover finally only took place on the 24th and 25th of February this year. So the lessons learned 
there now is to refine the process to make sure that before we even start the renovations as DPWI, that we have got all of those uh, arrangements in, in, in place. Um, in terms of the economic empowerment, uh, Chairperson and Honourable Members, um, we also have to look at the Supreme Court of Appeals judgment when it comes to the 27, uh, 2017 uh, preferential procurement regulations uh, that they declared unconstitutional, where you, know, you were allowed to set aside 30% uh, of a value of a tender to designated groups that include women, youth, and people with disabilities. So that is another area where another lesson has been learned and that we are working on it. To speed up the inspection of these properties, we now are going to instruct all our regional offices, 11 of them in the country, that the regional offices must go and inspect the buildings uh, that has been identified by national for the purposes of GBVF centers. And then they must then give us a report about the state of the buildings because the current process is a joint inspection by um, national social development, uh, provincial, um, national DPWI, and it's quite a lot of people and it takes a lot of time to coordinate diaries. So we will speed up uh, the identification of um, buildings uh, in the cities, in the, in the rural towns, all, all over the country. So I do, I do hope that the, the second phase of our rollout uh, will go much quicker. Uh, I've also instructed the department to reprioritize our budget because the excuse of government not having money uh, without even trying to reprioritize within your own budget, we can't also accept that. So uh, for the new financial year, starting on the 1st of April, we will reprioritize a GBVF as a, like the president calls it, a second pandemic. So, so hopefully in the future, Chairperson, we will be able to give you more, uh, uh, more good news and you know, to make sure that we attend to these things quicker. It's very painful that you almost hear on a daily basis about how our women and children are being abused in our country. And certainly as much as we need to work together, government, uh, civil society, um, and communities, uh, government must take the lead in the fight against GBVF. Uh, those are the only additional points that I want to make, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. I now invite honorable members to engage the report. Um, honorable Kramare. Honorable Hitlin, Honorable Matebula, uh, in that order. Uh, Honorable Machele is struggling with network. Honorable Graham Mare, Honorable Hitlin, Honorable Matebula, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Franz Kalvik, in that order, please. Honorable Graham Mare. Over to you. Uh, good morning, Chair. Um, good morning, Minister. Good morning, DM. And to, to everybody from DPWI, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I, I, I think what we're doing as a department is admirable, and I'm thrilled that we're part of this, of this fight against gender-based violence. Um, I also want to echo the sentiment that these things take far too long to implement, and there, there needs to be some way of speeding this up. You know, the need, the need for shelters and places for women to go where they can be safe um, and protected is immense. Um, so I honestly do believe we need to speed it up. One of the things I wanted to ask, though, which is slightly, slightly off the, the topic, but I think still relevant, is 
Um, Reverend, Reverend Stamela has been the chief director, as far as I can tell, of the gender unit within the department for some time now. Um, I know emanating as far back as 2017, we've had a gender unit in place um, where they've spoken about things like gender champions and obviously about pushing the, the, the gender um, parity within, within our entities and within the department. Um, what I wanted to know is, in line with this, so it, it doesn't help that we we are developing um, ex um, mechanisms to support women who are victims of GBV. Um, so in line with what we're doing on an external basis with our clients, what is being done within the department to address potential gender issues, um, GBV, victimization, et cetera, um, by the, the gender unit um, in conjunction with, with the work that's being done on the, um, the sort of um, external um, methods for dealing with it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Honorable Kram. Mare, Honorable Higlin. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you for the presentation. Um, it seems like uh, uh, Honourable Graham Marie and I are, are kind of on a parity with this because my next uh, question related very much to what Samantha said in terms of internal capacitation. Uh, what is being done within the department to deal with bullying, for example, and harassment of female uh, employees within various entities within the DPWI, because we definitely do have a problem. But to get to the actual presentation, Minister, I agree with you 100%. We seem to have a serious lack of urgency. And it's a great concern to me, because if X, Y, and Z is only going to be done between now and the 31st of March, how many lives are going to be lost? How many women, children, and LGBTQI members of society are going to find themselves victims of violence between now and the 31st of March? We had a commitment from the president to really addressing GBV in 2019. I don't see much evidence of that. I know it's not the primary focus of the DPWI, but we have, again, an incomplete immovable asset register. So it makes the identification of potentially habitable buildings that much more difficult. We need to approach this. Yes, it's, it's a DSD, a DPWI joint venture, but we need to approach it, I think, slightly differently in that we need to get our immovable asset register comprehensively documented so that I can come to you, Minister, and say to you, I have five buildings in Johannesburg that are immediately available. I have four in Pretoria, I have seven wherever, I'm sure you get my point, Minister, that we need to be able to know exactly what is on our books so that when the Department of Social Development comes to us and says we need a facility that has X number of rooms and potentially those number of bedrooms and those number of bathrooms, we can go straight to a, an electronic system that says, okay, matching to a very great extent, we have um, buildings in Johannesburg, Durban, wherever, wherever, wherever. And that is only going to be achieved if we have a comprehensive, well-planned, electronic system that identifies the buildings that we have. Please, Minister, when we are attacking this GBV issue, can we attack the issue of an immovable asset register that is hopelessly incomplete? Thank you. I'll leave it there, Chair. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, I will not be able to open my video due to network problems where I am, Chair. Um, Chair, let me uh, start by welcoming your, your inputs in this particular important meeting. And uh, I want to agree with you that indeed we still need to comply with health protocol if we want to try and avoid the issue of coronavirus uh, spreading. Uh, well, in one of the speeches uh, of the president, the president uh, uh, once said that the issue of GPV 
is a second pandemic uh, in our country. Uh, starting with, of course, Corona, then this one, which is a uh, GPV. So I think one needs to appreciate the fact that we have taken this particular initiative, um, making sure that we, uh, we make buildings available for victims and survivors of GPVF. Uh, however, Chair, um, well, I, I, according to the report, we are told that there's going to be a person who is going to be uh, appointed at a director level within the department. Um, I want to know exactly what will be the job description of that particular person. And also, Chair, I just want to also check if this will not be uh, wherein you have uh, that deals with this. Uh, that deals with the and to mention to uh, to the information that I, I don't have with them. But I want to say, Chair, if this may not be a duplication. And Chair, I also want to know if this has not been motivated by cases of GPV which are within the department. And if it is so, Chair, may we maybe be provided with the number of cases of a GPV that uh, take place within the department, if there's any. Um, Chair, maybe lastly, well, it has been also reported that uh, uh, there are sites that have been visited. Uh, when the minister spoke at the beginning of the meeting, he indicated that we are going to have a one center per municipality. I want to uh, make an example for, for instance. In Pumalang, it is said that uh, uh, nine properties were visited. And from where I am, say, we do not have nine municipalities in Pumalang. There's far more than that number of municipalities. And the place uh, that is indicated that was in the, uh, visit, visited is nearly straight. Now, Chair, I just want to know if then you talk and you refer uh, to properties that are available for uh, victims of GPV, uh, in particular in Pumala, do you mean that uh, those who will be victims or who are victims will be housed in in Nelly Split? And what about what the minister has, has said to say that each municipality is going to have a center um, that uh, uh, you know accommodates survivors of GPV? And Chair, very lastly, I want to also appreciate the fact that uh, as the department, we are heeding the call uh, of ensuring that uh, in terms of procurement, uh, women must benefit 40% of it. This is going to go a long way in ensuring that uh, women who get to be victims of GPV who may not come out and report such cases because of the fear that they might uh, lose support from their partners. They will be able uh, you know, to fend for themselves or to be independent financially and be able when that take, takes place, wherein a GPV case takes place, that woman will be able to walk out of that particular relationship and be able to uh, report the matter to the police without the fear of losing any support. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Honorable Matebula. Honorable Suiza. Uh, thank you, Chair. I hope my network is not going to fail me today. Uh, Chairperson, I, I, I need to 
in all the presentation, I think I've missed some of it because of the network problems, but uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to give support to women out there to ensure out there if we can take care of women in the department is to they are saying that's one thing I want to say. Uh, Chair, uh, Minister, I've got I've got a few questions and a few concerns. We we had a problem in the past of when we came to dealing with quarantine sites being provided by the Department of Public Works. And we found ourselves having whereby private properties were more activated than public properties. And it, it was a great concern that we've got, we've got a department that's supposed that party available pandemic that is out. And as Honorable Michelle, you just stated municipality. Yet we are sitting at a number of and then out of those only 22 were confirmed to be suitable. And then out of the 23, you still have 26 that you need to visit. Cases of women that are subjected to, to being violated, whether physically, emotionally, sexually, any kind of abuse against women and children and the youth and our lesbian and gay communities. And yet at this moment, when it was said in 2019, we are in 2021, we are sitting with 22 properties that have been confirmed to be suitable. And when I go to your challenges, that according to the presentation, there are no challenges, but you are sitting at 22. And it means that each and every municipality needs to have that. So in the case, Minister, I need to, in the case where properties are not suitable for victims to go there, what intervention are you going to make? to make sure that you've got enough properties without going to private properties or private ownership or private uh, places of people that are willing to give us places. What intervention are you going to do to make sure that those properties that are not suitable are actually going to be suitable? Because it, it and because, Many people don't even know where to go. So maybe you can even give us the names and the towns where these, where these, uh, um, where these shelters are so that you should be able to where you need to go if you've got a problem. And another thing, Minister, what I need to ask is how, what is the role of police of subs in this whole thing when it comes to shelters and making sure because Department of Public Works and, the, uh, uh, and police and social development, they need to work hand in hand in each and every municipality. So can we get the list of where are the of these shelters? To say each ministry has got the names and whether it's private property they're using. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Suisa, Honorable Van Skalvik. Good morning, Chairperson, Minister, DM, uh, members, uh, the department and everyone else present. Uh, Chair, I'm not going to uh, speak to the issues that all the, 
that's already been raised. Safe to say that I'm really uh, uh, welcoming the, the urgency the department is trying to address this uh, great initiative with amidst all the challenges that's been experienced and uh, I would really like to see chairperson that progress needs to be fast-tracked in terms of, of really implementing this thing because uh, rightfully so we acknowledge and we appreciate it that the department stepped in when the president spoke and tried to, to, to deal with the issues. But I think uh, I'm, I'm echoing the sentiment raised by Honorable Hickland that uh, when the asset register can, uh, should be completed, as soon as it is completed, that will also assist us in, in moving forward. Then Chairperson, the minister uh, spoke about some lessons learned, which includes the, the uh, long drawn out of the MOUs. So I would like to know what are the interventions that they are making as the department or strategies that they are implementing to fast track this uh, 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 finalization of the MOUs. Then I would like to welcome the initiative that uh, uh, the department is engaging some provinces where there's no available uh, national buildings available like in the Northern Cape, because it's really a, a challenge in some uh, uh, vast pro, uh, rural provinces where the vastness of the uh, provinces are so great. I take, for example, in the Northern Cape in my constituency, which is situated in Ritfontein in, in the Kalahari, which is situated in the largest municipality in the country in terms of geographical uh, spread. We see that the, the closest uh, uh, center for G, uh, GBV and uh, F is 264 kilometers, which is outrageous uh, when, when we look at the practicality. So it will really assist us, even though the, the department is envisaging to have one uh, center per municipality, they should also look at the distances uh, uh, in terms of ge the geographical spread and further strengthen that initiative to ensure that more centers are available. Then, Chairperson, I've looked at the, at the states that, that, that's been... Uh, uh, um, that we've we've been sent by the uh, the staff, and it's a matter of concern to me. That's why this issue is so close to my heart, and and uh, we really need to fast track this thing because we 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 see that the states are showing that majority of this uh, transgressions are taking place within the, the people's own uh, households. And we really need to, if, uh, through this initiative, we really need to, 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 to ensure that those uh, uh, survivors are being taken out of, of those, those households. Then Chairperson, I would, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see the, the in terms of the, the economic empowerment where women are and, and, and designated groups in spe uh, specifically are being uh, uh, prioritized for, for uh, women emancipation. But Chairperson, when we look at, uh, at, 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 at uh, the lessons learned as stipulated by the minister, I'm wondering if those are the only challenges that's been experienced or do they have other challenges, especially with in the cooperative uh, engagements with other departments, which needs urgent attention, which can fast track the rollout of this program. And uh, Chairperson, lastly, I want to, to really uh, stress that uh, we appreciate the fact that the department is taking this, this issue very seriously by appointing a full-time person to deal with gender issues. So 
uh, just on, 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 a, on a more personal note, Chairperson, seeing that we are members of this portfolio committee and we share the same vision as, as the department, it would be uh, uh, appreciated that whenever there are a rollouts taking place within the different uh, provinces, within the different uh, um, constituencies that the members attached to those areas are contacted to see if they are available to partake in those programs. That will also help to strengthen the message and spread the message more widely. I want to thank you, Chairperson. I'll pause there. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Van Stalweg, Honorable Tring, followed by Honorable Jobo. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I'm going to leave my video off also for connectivity uh, challenges, but uh, firstly, just want to um, appreciate the presentation and again, offer our condolences and prayers to the minister on, on her loss. Um, Chair, we, we support the, the call to address uh, both the internal as well as the, the external gender-based violence cases. Um, internally within the department, as well as what the department is doing to, uh, to address gender-based uh, violence and femicide cases outside of the department. We also support the call to, to, uh, to fix our challenges with the asset register, um, as well as looking at what is the ratio of private versus uh, public buildings that, uh, that are going to be used. Um, then, Minister, you, you mentioned the length of time that it uh, took and you, you expressed some frustration with the length of time that it took to obtain um, something which should be simple, like an, an MOU. Uh, so my question would be, what has been done to shorten that, uh, those time periods? Uh, what is where the, a problem has been identified, for example, uh, the wastage of time in obtaining, obtaining an MOU, uh, MOU to roll out what is a key uh, and important strategic plan in terms of addressing gender-based violence. How are you going to mitigate that uh, this does not repeat itself going forward? Um, and then perhaps my, my last question is, uh, very often we find, and, and I know that lots of departments um, tend to focus a lot on, on the, on the urban, in the urban areas. Um, and, and at times we tend to forget um, our rural communities. And, and so my simple question here is, how are we going to ensure that our rural communities are not going to be left behind um, in the rollout of, of this particular plan? And then perhaps finally, um, what, what interaction is there with uh, other sister departments um, to, to ensure that when those who have been faced with gender-based violence um, are perhaps housed uh, in a safe house that has been identified, but after a period of time, they are going to be, they're going to have to return back to their communities or back to the place where um, the, the violence actually took place. And so this requires an interministerial, an interdepartmental uh, effort. And so what, what interdepartmental and interministerial uh, efforts are in place to ensure the future of those who have been victims of gender-based violence? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Tring, Honorable Mjobo. And then after Honorable Mjobo, Honorable Van Skalvik, uh, she left a point that she would like to come and present. Honorable Mjobo. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, Honorable Members and the Minister and the DM. Uh, Chairperson, um, uh, Honorable Marshall is supposed to be part of this meeting. But because of fiber in Akashia is not in, in today, I'd like to know to the minister the progress on the issue of fiber in Akashia. 
we raised this issue several times that we have challenges in Akashia. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mjobo. Um, Honorable Franz Garvey. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me once more. Chairperson, there's, there's, there's one area that I, I was thinking about. Uh, during the COVID period, we are still in it, but in the beginning, or, or, uh, when we receive presentations from the department, they've identified certain buildings, uh, both private and public, but I'm specifically thinking about the uh, public buildings. We, that has been identified as quarantine sites. And some of these uh, buildings needed some renovations. But when we, we, we saw the, uh, how the buildings has been used, it's clear that many of those buildings has not been used. So I wanted to know if there are not some of those buildings that can also be used for this initiative that, that, uh, that was identified as, as, as uh, quarantine sites. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Honorable Van Skalvik. Uh, Minister uh, and your team, uh, DM. One thing that we know is that South Africa is, is referred to as one of the countries in which you have a high crime rate. And looking at those crime stats, um, violence against women and children, we all know that it is escalating each day. If we can compare what was happening in 2017 with what was happening in 2020, you could see the, the, the drastic hike in, in terms of violence against women and children. This is a, a correct uh, start, if we may say, um, you providing or collaborating with other departments. The reality is that we have to fight gender-based violence and femicide now to ensure that our kids have future and we have to win that battle. We have to win this war that we are facing as the country. So the, the, the first thing is that uh, the signing of the MO, is it MOUs or MOA uh, uh, minister, it, it is very crucial but it, it is also proper that you ensure that before signing, everything is above board. We don't want to see uh, uh, after signing and find out that there are many things that are coming up. We have to look at the proper procedures and all that. But two minister, working with other departments on this, and, and we have to, at some stage, uh, not talk about strategies, talk about the implementation. We really appreciate. And I know that one of the houses, um, um, properties, not house, that has been uh, handed over to the Department of Social Development in Eastern Cape in Owartam, um, Tata, is in Inguza Hill Municipality in Lusikisik. Lusikisik, in terms of crime stats in Eastern Cape is among the first five police stations where rape cases reported are high. Remember, there are those that are not reported. So you donating that house or handing it over to a Department of Social Development, I think it will, it will do a lot. But looking at the cases that you're saying, uh, the, the areas that you have identified, I know that in Eastern Cape, your regional offices are in PE, in, um, in Kwebecha and Mtata. We have to be used to this day, Kwebecha. So 
but I am worried, uh, and, and the properties that you have identified are in these two areas. I am worried there is another um, municipality. I know you're saying that you have to ensure that all the municipalities are provided with this property. Buffalo City Municipality. I think it is leading in the province in terms of violence against women and children. So I think it is one of the areas that the Eastern Cape should look at, not only these two areas, Yomtata and, and Kabeha, where your regional offices are, but I think also East London, per se, East London, to be specific, you need to look to East London. I know there are many properties of public works and infrastructure that are lying there, that are not used, some are still in good condition. So we need to look at that. This fight cannot be won only by providing these safe houses and, and uh, properties. The issue of empowering women economically, it also assists them because it gives them power even over the perpetrators. Many women are in wrong relationships because someone is staying there because the man is providing for her. And she remains in that relationship. She is a punching bag day in, day out, but she remains in that relationship because she doesn't see the life outside that relationship. She knows that if she gets out of that relationship, she will be forced to maybe to sleep on the street, to starve and all that. So empowering women economically must be something that all the departments are talking about. I'm worried to get Minister, when you are saying that there is a judgment that came out that said that the 30% set aside is wrong. I think Treasury needs to come up with a clear act on that one. I understand that in municipalities, it is there in the MFMA that 30% should be given to designated groups, which are which include women, children, and people living with disabilities. So I think Treasury should look at this uh, judgment, but we have to ensure that whatever that is being done, whatever procurement, women should be looked at, women, uh, the service providers that are women, service providers that are young people, and service providers that are people living with disabilities. They are many, but they are not given uh, e -E jobs or they are not asked to provide for services. Even in these uh, properties that you have identified, you can even utilize those women that are staying there to paint, to clean, maybe using the EPWP uh, program. So at the end of the day, they are getting something so that even when they have to move out of that area where they will be, at least they have something. But appreciating the presentation, it is clear. Then, um, then asking you, Minister and Tim and Reverend Stemela to respond on the comments and questions that have been posed by honorable members. Thank you. Thank you, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, I will just make a few general comments, a Chairperson. Um, the first one, um, I don't know if the members have received the, the list of properties that we are currently talking about. And when you look at the list of, of properties as we have presented it to you, it goes to the point raised by Honorable Matabula. So, we have just now have experience of the first phase. So the second phase a strategy is what we are refining now. And when we report again to the committee, 
our report will reflect all 258 municipalities. It will reflect all the 44 districts and the eight metropolitans. So that the way we've gone about it now was just to go and look what can we find on the immovable estate register that is a possible house that could possibly be used for centers for survivors of GBVF. We are changing that now to say that we must provide in all the municipalities, districts and metros so when you go onto the immovable asset register, you go and look specific for a specific area. And where we as DPWI don't have a property, there we then have to work together with the municipalities and the provinces that must also release buildings. So the next report will be a lot more clearer with, with information, not just about what we have identified, but what we have identified, what we have inspected, and how far are we with the renovation of those uh, particular buildings. The, because we do not only need to look at my view is that uh, certain houses, we can also look at bigger buildings that we can repurpose for the purpose of being a gender-based violence survivor center. Right now, we, we are very uh, inward looking. We're only looking at, at houses. Um, the instruction now will be to look at buildings because like for instance, in a metropolitan, well, it will be good if you have centers bigger centers where that, that is central for all the members in the metropolitans to come, but even the metropolitans are very big. So we are really changing the way we are identifying buildings. We are not identifying private sector buildings. We will be discussing the contribution of the private sector in terms of buildings when we meet with the private sector solidarity fund and uh, ask them also that the private sector can also identify and make buildings available. Currently, we are only working on, on public uh, owned buildings and, and not on, on, on private owned buildings. So I think with the next report chairperson, we will be able to be much clearer to all of you, because the one purpose and the one area where we need to also now begin to work closely together, it's not only with the different spheres of government. We need to share the information of the shelters with uh, members of parliament, members of the legislature, councillors. Uh, there are district champions that come from the various that is being appointed by the president. They must all have this information. And we must also ask um, a, a private, I mean, public representatives that in the area where you live, and if you are aware of a building that's there, that you can also direct us towards that building. So if, if all of us can come together the centers is really a place to remove the women out of that abusive situation because normally they stay and then get killed because they've got no place to go. The question about the South African police services. Yes, we share with the with SAPS uh, the, the centers that are operational or where they are. Because normally when a woman come and report um, to SAPS about abuse, uh, a SAPS will then either take the woman there or refer the woman to that center. Uh, and in our discussion with SAPS, um, and is that for them it's very difficult to, to police gender-based violence. Like one of the members said, it's happening inside the house by people that you know. So the SEPs come in after the event once the woman has been abused already. So there is a serious breakdown of the social fabric of society in our country. 
And I think we all have got a role to play to, to strengthen the family unit. We don't have families, functional families. Families are dysfunctional where you've got women abuse, you've got drug abuse and all of that. So on the social aspect, you know, that is where we need to get in more social workers and we all need to rebuild um, the, the, the family unit. Just about the department, um, first of all, uh, the gender-based unit that we found in the department in 2019 was not the unit set up to actually act and do uh, and respond to gender-based violence. It was more a unit for advocacy. And so there was just a small budget for advocacy. We have changed that now to, to, to place this uh, gender-based violence uh, unit within intergovernmental relations department. It used to be in the DG's department before. So we, we did do some restructuring so that we can begin to allocate more, um, more funding uh, to the unit. But in terms of gender balance it, it, uh, in the department, we are sitting with a situation where we've just had over 30% women in our department and over 50% men. And so now you will see in all the advertisements that we are putting now, we make it very clear that we've got a bias towards women, especially in the senior equivalence of the department and lower down is very, very male dominated. And there is now a strategy to, to at least bring, bring the balance back. Um, in terms of the, the uh, incomplete immovable asset register and to digit, digitize the immovable asset register, we have on some other occasions uh, brief uh, the members about the slow implementation of this Archie bus model. Um, it started more than eight years, nine years ago when this model was adopted by the department, but all the modules of this model has still not been implemented. We have now seek the help uh, of National Treasury to assist us to digitize uh, the immovable um, asset re uh, 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 register. Um, then the, the I, I did say that we the, the, the buildings that were identified for quarantine sites, uh, those buildings were from the private sector and from uh, the public sector. But since uh, we are, government is no longer responsible to provide accommodation for people to go in isolation for 10 or for 14 days, the cost of isolation must now be borne by, if the people come from overseas, they must pay for their own accommodation for isolation. Mm -hmm. But the list is still there and we will certainly be revisiting that list and see, you know, from the public sector side, uh, some of those facilities that we could possibly uh, also, also use there. I did say in our next report, um, we, we will now speed up. We're sending out a notice to all our regional offices that in next week, until next week, Friday, they have time to go and inspect all of those buildings. We don't need to send 10, 20 people from five different departments there. Our regional offices must do that and they can work together with the respective provinces instead of having all of these big teams going around all the countries, all over the country. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, there is an interministerial committee chaired by uh, 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 the Minister of, of Women, Youth and People with Disabilities. And uh, that, that unit has had, uh, through that IMC, uh, the plan, which is now called the National Strategic uh, Plan, uh, has been finalized there. So we are sort of past the policy stages and a lot of the implementation and the transversal management of departments working together uh, is, is, is being um, discussed here. Uh, many members ask about the MOA. Yes, uh, you could say in the case of the Western Cape was the first time that we were doing it. 
But we now have got some kind of a draft of uh, um, MOA, which we can standardize. And we have asked the provinces to make input so that we don't have to have a different MOA for different provinces, but we will standardize the MOA uh, that need to be signed. Because remember, we're only providing the building, but what happens inside the building? Uh, the programs, it's, 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 it's funded and it's dealt with by the provincial departments of social development um, and, and, and the national one. Then we also have a number of existing uh, gender-based violence centers all over the country. Uh, and I was thinking about this when members spoke about how do you economically empower a woman before, uh, I mean, after, you know, she needs to go out on her own and leave the center. There is a center in Cape Town called the South Kibartman Center. And it's amazing the model that they are using. Uh, and, and, and as the Department of Public Works, we are working uh, together with them. Um, you know, we, we help them to clean the place and uh, we have made donations of computers and so to them. But this is really where the, the actual program to empower the women economically, that is where social development and the provinces will come in with those plans. From DPWI side, we must now make sure that we, uh, in terms of EPWP, we need to look, and I agree 100% with members that says that how do we empower women, especially to do maintenance and repairs? We must have just women teams that are women-led that we can employ to do maintenance and repairs, like painting and fixing. Women can do that. And, and, and already in the department, we are looking at establishing this women maintenance um, plant. Uh, teams where uh, that we can use EPW uh, P4. But I want to assure the members that the, the, the next report will be completely different from what we are giving it to you now because of the lessons that we've learned in the first phase. And we are now into the second phase and we are really doing things differently so that we can speed up the process. Um, in terms of the, the, the victimization of, of women within the department, I will ask the acting DG um, to deal with that. Um, we will certainly speed up our performance because of the task team. And that uh, as the minister, I've joined the task team and we will be meeting on a weekly basis. So honorable chairper, um, uh, chairperson and members, we, we, we are trying our best. And just in conclusion, chairperson, I just want to thank all the members uh, for the messages of condolences. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you, Minister. Um, I think the Reverend Stemella would like to come in. In addition, you... Yes, uh, Chairperson, we have Reverend Stemella and we also have Mr. Sole Nchwane. He's with uh, the DDG Nileti Makubele from uh, the real estate branch uh, and Soli will talk to the state-owned properties. Uh, given that these are state-owned properties, he'll also make an input. Thank you, Chair. How are you to you? Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I think the Minister have covered most of um, the questions that have been uh, asked here. Um, Regarding the, the internal efforts to combat gender-based violence, um, uh, I think we, we, as a department, we, we had a program with a Commission for Gender Equality. I think this came up after there was a, a query that was lodged with the, with the CGE. And uh, we embarked on a, on a training on, on, first of all, it was the review of the policy of the sexual harassment policy that we had. Um, we engaged with uh, labor relations uh, and um, there were also labor relations given training um, on sexual harassment by, by CGE. And we also had several uh, workshops uh, within the whole uh, branches, not branches, the, 
the regional offices. Um, we had lots of workshops on, on, on an awareness on the policy on sexual harassment. And uh, we also have a, we also report to DPSA uh, on the number of cases. Uh, it's, this one is a, it's a, it's a, it's a mandatory reporting by all the departments. Uh, we report to twice a year to, to, DP, DP, to DPSA. And we're working with, uh, with labor relations on, on this one, whereby the, um, the DG have signed this, I think just beginning of, it was last year. Yeah, last year, we reported the, last, the last report was in November. So we'll be reporting again uh, end of March uh, uh, for, for the, with, the, with, the, with the cases um, on sexual harassment. There are a lot of awareness campaigns and awareness uh, programs within the department that are driven from, from the gender unit. Um, uh, we, 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 somebody asked also about the, the bullying uh, within the department. Um, um, we, we have had um, lots of uh, cases on, on that one and uh, in partnership with labor relations. Uh, we've had, we had um, a, a workshop on, on, on bullying uh, as well as with, with, with wellness. So there are many uh, activities that, are, that, that we do uh, on, on an annual basis. And most of the time it's always even highlighted um, especially uh, during the, the calendar month, depending on whether it is Women's Month, whether it is uh, World AIDS Day, whether it is on those awareness campaigns are ongoing. Um, but then because we, I did not prepare this information uh, uh, because we just thought we were gonna be talking only about uh, the, the, the lease agreements. But like Minister says, next time when you come in, we'll come in and give a, a comprehensive report on what is actually uh, being, being done within the department. And, and indeed, uh, the, 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 the approach that we, we will be taking that the minister have actually instructed with the re, with capacitation of the gender unit to ensure that we even spread not only just uh, within the department, but also beyond uh, um, into the sector itself. Hence, the, the, the move of the unit to the IGR branch, where we will be able to focus also uh, in, the, in the sector, on the public works sector. We've already started the, the, the engagements because we even had a workshop last year with the gender focal persons of public works, um, provincial public works, where we are discussing about our programs and how do we sign the synergy to ensure that uh, um, we, 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 the sector itself, um, we have kind of a, a, a uniform approach and, and also to learn from each other. So I think uh, the, the capacitation of the unit and the realignment of the unit uh, will also assist, but but I, but I want to say that uh, I have to say this uh, that uh, you know it, it's it's not only about the gender unit, um, you know, raising issues of gender mainstream. It is also about the the actual um, receiving from the implementing uh, uh, branches, because you realize that um, most of the work will be done in, in the department will be done by different branches. So the importance of the task team, uh, and I think with the minister's involvement now, it will also assist us because sometimes, yes, as gender unit, you would, you would be um, in a position where you are able to to come up with ideas, but you are not the only you are not the implementer. You depend. So the interdependence also have been, also been a, a problem, but we are working on that, and are hopefully with this task team now being going to be uh, even. Um, uh, 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 supported by the minister, then we'll be able to, 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 to work better and, and, and produce more results. Um, the issue, or the issue of Honorable uh, Suiza, um, okay, oh, oh, yeah, oh, of Honorable Suiza about the, looking at the, the list of properties. Um, I think uh, the minister have already mentioned that when you look at, you might, you might be, uh, the, the, the presentation might not cover the, all the places that the shelters or the, the buildings are in, but we have also provided a list of, um, of properties which will show um, the, the areas, because it's not necessarily in the urban areas, but in our presentation, we just mentioned those areas because they are our regional office. Uh, which are responsible for the different uh, rural areas. So, in the list that we, the Excel list that we have that we have uh, provided, you'll be able to see the town or the, the township 
of where of where this um the shelters are. Uh, you spoke about the nail spray, um the nail spray in Pumalanga one. Um there are many the, the buildings are not necessarily in nail spray, some are in Lotte, in Delmas, um in Camden, um in MLO, in Standard 10. So with, with the at least you'll see the the, the the spread of the of the properties but we are not denying the fact that we are not able to reach out to all the municipalities and uh, the different municipalities like, like what the minister said hence our our engagement uh, with with the the provincial uh, departments uh, to to ensure and the municipality to ensure that we are able to to reach out to even more 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 areas also with the guidance of the department of of social development because um, like the minister have already mentioned, there are already existing shelters uh, in, in some areas. And so they will be also, they are also assisting us to show where the need is, where the, sh where the gaps are. Uh, and, and, and we are also trying to, 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 to take that approach so that we are able to reach out to where uh, there are no shelters, existing shelters at the moment. The next one. I think the minister has covered most of them. And the economic empowerment um, uh, uh, chairperson, you mentioned your 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 concern for economic empowerment. Um, we we will we are definitely uh, uh, like I've mentioned that we are definitely trying to engage with um, treasury. This initiative has already been 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 is in place already with through presidency and treasury, where we have had about three meetings already, two meetings already um, with Treasury and uh, with the Presidency and Department of Women, where we're engaging about uh, the 40% pronouncement by the President, how we are going to, uh, departments had to make a presentation of how they're going to ensure that that 40% is reached. And uh, hence we are talking about um, the, the Women Empowerment Program that we're going to put in place as, as a driver. But we've also, um, I've already mentioned that we've also engaged uh, branches to review their procurement plans to ensure that the, the, the procurement plans are, are targeting designated groups uh, for the next financial year. And um, we, we, are, we, are, we have put in place, we've put in place uh, interventions to ensure that uh, we really try to get to the, to the 40% because currently we are sitting at 21%. And we, we have, um, this inter inter ministerial committee, not inter ministerial, at, at, at a technical uh, level, the IMC, but at technical level, where we engage with uh, SAPS, Department of Health, um, Department of Social Development, um, Department of Women, where we discuss these issues of um, operationalization and services within the the shelters. So, as department, we will provide. Um, uh, we provide the buildings, but then the other areas uh, like Department of Health must provide uh, services within those uh, shelters as well as social development. So we do have these meetings where we sit and we talk about we talk about uh, strategies and, and and how we support each other to ensure that uh, the, the 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 shelters are complete. Because without uh, those services, then the shelters just become just the building, and 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 we have those meetings uh, uh, almost every week with. Uh, where we are called the social impact uh, work stream. Uh, this, is a play, this is where we even had an opportunity to, to discuss the issues of funding, whereby we finally, um, Department of Women uh, managed to, to, to also um, facilitate the funding by CARA. So this is where we meet, uh, we meet almost every week um, as a team, uh, to, to, as an inter-ministerial inter team at technical level, where we are able to raise these issues. Um, I think I've, 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 I will stop here. If there's anything that I have left, um, you know, my colleagues will assist. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lady. Um, before, the, before the acting DG chair, may you please allow me to okay. say something. Honorable Okay, the, the speaker will just have a stop of uh, uh, now, Chair. Um, well, uh, she refers to members as somebody. Uh, we all know, uh, even in terms of the rules, that we don't have somebody, but we should be referred as members or by Honorable Matebula, for an example. But to say somebody, I think uh, 
is a bit belittling, Chair. Can that be corrected? Thank you. Apologies. Thank you, uh, thank you Honorable Matabula. I think you correct, uh, Reverend Stemela. Hey, apologies, ma'am. You know, I'm, 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 I'm very sorry. It's my first time to speak in this kind of platform. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, apologies. But Reverend Stemela, this committee has been in existence since 2019, and you are in the department. So your, your, your apology, the way you are saying it, you must just apologize unconditionally. Mm. Ma'am, I'm, I'm unconditionally, I, I really apologize. It was not meant to be like that. Yeah, I apologize you. sincerely, humbly. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Sister Miller. Over to you. Um, thank okay, you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Chair, I have uh, two other colleagues uh, in our presence. Is Neledu Makubele. She's a DDG for real estate management uh, and that particular branch deals with all the state-owned properties that are made available of shelters. So I'd like to give the opportunity to Neleti, as well as our Chief Director, Sole Njwane, who is supporting this program directly to make an input and to deal with some of the questions raised as well. Colleagues, over to you. I'm not sure which one of you will take it. Um, um, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, Minister and Deputy Minister and colleagues, um, DG, it will be solely because he has all the details of the properties in the various provinces. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, Minister, Deputy Minister, and Honorable Members and the DG. Thank you very much uh, for this particular platform. I think the Minister and the Reverend Stimela have actually covered a number of areas which uh, were raised as an advice or concern. Mine is to also confirm that uh, the question that Mem Sharon Van Skalvik, Honorable Sharon Van Skalvik was asking about the quarantine sites. I'd like to report that uh, one of the property which was identified as a quarantine site being Salvacop was being handed over to the Department of Social uh, Development as the NEF center. And uh, that in that way, it is currently operational. And I'd like to also agree with the minister that when he started the program, we were more focused on the residential properties, but with uh, the specifications now being leaning towards more of a functional accommodation. In our next phase, when you identify these properties, we are going to identify properties that are more of uh, office accommodation that can be converted into residential. And I think as we are then sitting with the Department of Social Development, we're even getting to know more about their accommodation specifications. And I think in our next list, we are going to identify more of those properties that are functional so that they can accommodate a number of uh, victims of gender based violence and femicides. I would like to also point out that uh, Honorable Nolita Ntobengwana has highlighted the fact that we also need to identify properties that, that are located in rural areas or such as Lusikisiki. And I think in the next visit that the minister is indicating will happen not later than the 12th of uh, March uh, instant. And there are certain properties in uh, the Eastern Cape province uh, that are located in some remote areas such as Lusikisiki, which shall also be visited to verify as to whether it will suit the client's requirement. I would like to also highlight that so when we then do the selection in our future, we'll ensure that we also identify more of properties that are located in rural areas. And we shall also ensure that those properties perhaps can house are not only limited to the residential properties. I think most of the questions are being answered. I will pause there. Thank you very much, DG. And Thank you very much, uh, uh, Soli. Uh, Chairperson, just uh, one or two uh, issues to, to, to respond to as well. There were a few comments made about the asset register. And um, without defending the register, uh, I'd like Soli to also comment there about the, 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 the fitness for purpose of the register. 
to identify these sites, you know, as shelters for gender-based violence. And, uh, you know, I'd like him to comment because I'd like to also, you know, add to Chairperson that the asset register was qualified in the last financial year by the Auditor General on the grounds of evaluation. Uh, in some respects, that some of the properties were not adequately valued, but we've moved beyond that challenge of completeness. They now uh, conclude the AG that our asset register is substantially complete uh, and does not any longer warrant an audit qualification on that particular basis. But Swali can also comment about the fitness for purpose for his uh, need in identifying these sites. Chair, I'd just like to touch on two more issues. The one is the interaction with sister departments. It was mentioned um, that uh, we need to obviously appreciate the intergovernmental relations aspect of uh, this particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, need and challenge of providing uh, these facilities. And uh, we've now uh, located the this program in the uh, intergovernmental relations unit. In fact, um, the colleague has a bereavement, family bereavement, but the program as a whole is now driven by our intergovernmental relations. Uh, and they essentially coordinate uh, this initiative with the understanding and appreciation that the interaction with the other government departments, uh, in, in particular Department of Social Development, uh, as at the provincial as well as the national level, is key in this regard. So that is appreciated, uh, Chairperson, that particular input. And then finally, Chair, another um, common theme of the inputs is this long drawn out uh, process and a memorandum of understanding that takes time. And I'd like to, to comment there that one of the uh, key interventions we, we've made and that we need to continue to make is to, to manage the expectations that the department is responsible and owns its properties. And these properties must be properly maintained and repaired and renovated to make them fit for the purpose of serving as a gender-based uh, uh, violent shelters. Uh, or shelters for victims of gender-based violence. But what transpires thereafter in terms of Kiyama, the, the Immovable Asset Management Act, and our own business processes, the department then runs on the basis of a user charge that the user must pay. And in uh, the process, we need to recover our repairs and maintenance costs, uh, capital expenditure, as well as service charges, such as rates and taxes. And that is where we've, we've had a, a, a challenge as well that we need to manage that with the user departments, especially that the provincial departments are not our usual clients and our relationships with them is somewhat new. We need to manage the expectation that we provide the facility, but there's also a user charge involved. Once we manage that, the MOU will then speed up and we'll obviously have quicker turnaround time. So that's also an important considerations with which we've, we've had to address. Uh, Chairperson, I'd like to uh, hand over uh, back to the Deputy Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you, Acting Minister. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and a very good morning to all the honorable members, um, as led by your honorable self chair, as well as um, officials present. Um, Minister, if, if, if she's still there, I know that she has a meeting now, uh, as she has apologized earlier. Let she's still there. I know that she has a meeting now, uh, as she has apologized earlier. Let me just cover. three principles uh, which to, I must uh, when we should we work and therefore in, in respect of communication uh, of the sites the various sites to the various champions will will speed up uh, the, the process but also uh, remember we already as the ministry uh, held a meeting with all provincial MECs of social development and all MECs of public works and infrastructure in all provinces to, to, to try and fast track uh, this work because 
it is at the lower levels where the really the rubber hits the tar, if I could use that language. So Chair, um, ours is to ensure that in, in, in our quest to win the war, um, there's, there's sharing of information. But it also means that even as, as ourselves, as public representatives now, we, we need to drive the messaging. I, have, I really noticed that in our quest to, to ensure that the facilities are there, the messaging part, we not really have put much emphasis on, uh, which is another area that as a department, uh, having identified quite a number of sites across the country for the messaging, we, we need to work together to ensure that the messages that are on those boards um, across the country kind of um, have an effect of uh, arousing one's conscience, uh, being educative and um, transformative, uh, transforming the attitudes and educating uh, especially men because violence against women is it's, it's, it's limited on women against women. It's more on men against women. And, and therefore driving that messaging and education uh, and identifying these sites where the messages must go and identifying the actual messages, we will also need your support there as, as honorable members and, and inputs uh, as we drive that program as well. On empowerment, we, it, it, the minister did cover the area of the, the, the the, the question uh, of the court case uh, that uh, declared um, the current set asides as, as um, uh, illegal, we, we really need to work there together to find, uh, because it, 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 it is interpretation of legislation uh, that has caused that. We really need to work together there to find a, a suitable um, legislation that will help us drive what we would want to see. Um, on our side, as, as the department and uh, the sector, we set up uh, what we called collaborative fora, where CBE, CIDB, uh, all those that work in the transformation of the industry uh, and especially women, we set them up in groups where they will help us look at the laws, uh, not only the preferential procurement, even other laws that may pose a threat uh, in, the, in the process of us wanting to drive transformation and empowerment of women uh, specifically. And, and, and therefore those it was for me heartwarming to hear from the Department of uh, Women, uh, um, Youth and People with Dis Disabilities, uh, comments from that department uh, around the work that those collaborative forums are doing, which was a, quite a very pleasing and um, a positive um, report because what we set those for us to do, to, to, to influence, to come up with uh, strategies as the people, we feel that those who are affected um, the worst are the best to come up with solutions. So we, in that approach, uh, I think it is working. They have, they have um, worked together with Treasury. They are discussing and consulting on, on, on the, kind of uh, proposals that they feel must uh, be included in legislation as we review the, the procurement, uh, the preferential procurement uh, act. Uh, and I think that the, our honorable members also need to get closer to that uh, because for, for us, even though the, the court says this, uh, um, 
preferential procurement is unconstitutional, but the objectives of that uh, um, the objectives of that act are to ensure that we change the status quo, we create an environment where women are empowered. Uh, so the set aside is not just a window dressing exercise, it's a step that we thought is necessary if we are to give a meaningful uh, contribution to transforming uh, the economic uh, relations, the, the powers uh, therein. My last uh, point, uh, Chair, is on uh, uh, well, I think I covered the geography and the, the ruralness because also the, the issue of the geography um, will be addressed when all municipalities have, because the key decision taken is all municipalities must have these safe centers. And therefore ours is to ensure that, I know that there are municipalities, especially in the Northern Cape, where one small town is here and the next small town is 200 k's away. Obviously in such scenarios, we can't say a municipality will have one uh, center, but for us, the one municipality, one center is to try and, and, and um, what propel us to cover the geographic space uh, in a manner that uh, responds to the current challenge. But where conditions require that more, uh, we are not limited that we can't have more. In, or in fact, in the cities that are there already, we have more. But also we need to be reminded that uh, this work of safe centers have been work that is, has been there conducted by um, NGOs. And, and therefore, um, it is, it is not that the, um, where we have not identified the, the, the buildings, there the are no centers. Uh, centers were there, in, but they were not covering the whole of South Africa. And therefore what we are doing is to try and ensure that the whole of South Africa is covered through the, 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 the buildings, the facilities, uh, uh, and the like that we have. And uh, lastly, my uh, Honorable Chair, I, I do want to, as a, a um, politician a leader in the department, uh, add my voice in apologizing for, uh, for the department um, in terms of the, the, the comment. I, I, I must uh, admit, uh, Chair, that uh, we, we have a particular way that we address each other. And um, it, 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 it is just unfortunate that uh, um, um, uh, Reverend Stemela is, is attending this for the first time. Um, but my apology is not to, to really justify that um, because we watch this on TV, we, we participate and uh, in truly the department is not coming to the committee for the first time. Mine is to, on behalf of the department, uh, profusely apologize to the honorable members and uh, appeal to the acting uh, DG to say we, we need to drill uh, people before coming to, to the committee, especially those that would be coming to the first time, to the committee for the first time. Our sincere apologies uh, to the committee. Um, and we will work, this is, this is, this work is very close to our because we, we are women ourselves and uh, as leadership of the department. And we, we see, we feel the pain that women feel in the relationships, uh, abusive relationships that they find themselves. But I also want to appeal to all of us as leadership 
because uh, honorable members are leaders where they come from, where they are currently, that um, we may have these safe centers. Somebody said to me, in fact, I think it's the Minister of Social Development. When we were opening one of the centers, she was saying, government should not be spending this money uh, on, this, on these centers. Had our society uh, been normal society, um, had our homes been homes, uh, and therefore we all as leaders of the country now have a responsibility to ensure that the actual message that seeks to stop uh, the gender-based violence and femicide and messages that we carry uh, through everywhere we go. Let us uh, join hands in preaching that, um, that that way of life is an absurd way of life. And let us ensure that we educate our young uh, men, our boy children um, to, to, to take because it, it's going to take now a generation to, to stop this, but we need to act in a manner that is um, educative, supportive uh, to young men in, in, to, to, to such a point that they indeed see uh, this as something that's not acceptable and, and therefore desist from um, actions uh, that seek to uh, act in a very violent manner, especially uh, against women. And therefore, um, uh, Honorable Chair, allow me to, to thank the contribution of the Honorable Members uh, in this and the advices. Uh, we appreciate them, especially this one that says also consider those sites that were uh, for quarantine uh, purposes, um, especially those buildings that are owned by government. We, we really need to up our game and act faster. And I, I hope that the senior management that is uh, with us today is listening to the urgency that we so uh, much always speak about that it is not only us in the department that feel that we, we're not doing enough. Even the, our overseers feel we are not doing enough. We are not um, um, acting um, in a manner that reflects agency. And, and therefore I do want to, to appreciate uh, the support from the committee uh, and um, the comments, the positive comments uh, shared. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you, GM. Um, Honorable members, any second bite on this before we move to another item? Uh, Honorable Hicklin, I don't know whether Honorable Van Skalveg, your hand was up before or it is up now because all along it has been up. Thanks, Chair. Um, my statement is very much just what I wrote in the chat, um, to please urge all of us as responsible members of Parliament to please not share the addresses of the safe houses with anyone and everyone, because that is guaranteed to lead to a second round of abuse for women who go into those shelters because then the perpetrators of violence know exactly where to find them. We have to be very circumspect how we share that knowledge. That's just the point I'd like to make. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Hicklin. Um, Minister, in her absentia, uh, DM, Acting DG and the team, um, the, um, the ruling party, declared this year 
as the year of Mama Charlotte Makake, the first black woman to obtain a degree, a woman who was an internationalist, humanitarian, a woman who looked after so many people doing good work. It is therefore crucial that what you are doing in the fight against gender-based violence. And secondly, knowing that the department is the owner of all the properties of the government. You continue, but also we dare not fail the woman who could have been the president of this country. Had there been no apartheid, had there been no patriarchy, which has its roots embedded in our communities and our systems. If we really want to change the lives of women and young people out there, it is crucial that this department play its role. Remember, many departments out there do not trust you much as you are the owners of all these buildings and properties. Maybe because of the past failures and mistakes, especially when it comes to repairs and maintenance. This one that we have taken over, it will also stop the cry that we have all of us in the provinces that so many properties of public works are lying there. They need repairs, they are vandalized. Criminals are housed on those properties because no one, I made an example in one um, meeting that we had. In Kumbu, Eastern Cape, there are properties there in which uh, the Department of Justice usually housed the magistrate, the prosecutors, and all that were working in the magistrate offices. But those houses now, they just there, the criminals, they go there, they rape people there. Because those people that were staying there were told by public works to vacate those houses. They're lying. There. So if really we can ensure that these houses that are not being utilized are even donated to municipalities, some municipalities even lack offices. So if you can donate, use them as safe houses because the, the department is failing to maintain those houses. We dare not fail in this year that has been declared as the year of Mamushalot Makrake. On the 7th of April, she would have been 150 years if she was alive, but she is no more. As the department that is being led by women, uh, as we have indicated, so uh, Deputy Minister, you dare not fail that woman. GBF, GBVF is a fight that all of us, not only women, we must embark upon. We must win this war that is directed to women and our children. Thank you, uh, um, DM. Hoping that next time when we get a, a report on this, at least a lot should have been done, uh, and especially on what was highlighted by the members. Uh, Ms. Martinez, uh, we are going to be dealing with the minutes now and after we'll be dealing with, um, with the plan. Uh, which has been updated in dealing with expropriation bill. Ms. Martinez, I think we may then, um, uh, if you you are free to go, uh, DM and, um, and your team, but if you would like to remain till the end of the meeting, you are also allowed to do so. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I think we will have to quickly have our own to follow up on the issues raised. Once, once again, thanks to, to all, and uh, I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Ms. Martinez. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Um, the first set of minutes that we will adopt today is the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 17th of February, 2021, where in which we dealt with uh, the consideration and adoption of the 2021 uh, quarter one committee program. We also considered and adopted the 2020-21 first and second quarter performance reports of the committee. We also considered and adopted the Parliamentary Villages Oversight Report and, and minutes of previous meetings. I would now like the honorable members to just come into the attendance and just double check if everything is okay. All right, moving right along to the resolutions. All right, the first resolution was that uh, the Secretariat should follow up and establish where the funds were made available for the radio promotions informing the public of the expropriation bill uh, to be aired as soon as possible. So um, that was one, and at 6.2, the Secretariat must uh, send the draft media plan to members of the committee as soon as it is finalized. Um, 6.3, the department must ensure that all uninhabitable prefab housing units are given urgent attention and residents must be moved to proper units as a matter of urgency. At 6.4, the department must ensure that asbestos roofing is banned from use in the parliamentary villages. 6.5, the department is to ensure that they use innovative building methods as certified by Agrima SA. Um, second last one, the department and parliament need to urgently sort out the network issues uh, because they pose a challenge to members, especially during virtual meetings as we have seen also today. Um, the last one is that the committee must be included in all meetings relating to the mandate of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure by all structures of Parliament. That should be all from my side, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Ms. Martinissa. Honorable members, uh, this minutes the true reflection of what was discussed and deliberated upon on the meeting on the set date. We can start with the corrections, if there are any corrections, and then have a mover. Honorable Mjaba. I move the adoption of the mini. It's a true reflection. Thank you, Honorable Jobo. Uh, the second. Can we get a second, uh, Honorable Members, please? I'm happy to second, okay. Chair. Thank you, Honorable Graham Murray. Uh, seconds. The second set of minutes, Ms. Martinez. Thank you, Chairperson. The second set of minutes were are the minutes that of, of the meeting that was held on the 24th of um, February. I'm trying to flight the minutes up and I'm just battling a little bit. Please uh, um, receive my humblest apologies, Chair. Here, I found it. I've got the document on screen. Is it visible to everyone? It is. Yes, Nola. Right. Thank you very much. The minutes that we are considering are the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 24th of February, 2021, where in which the department briefed the committee on progress made in implementing the Bay Bridge Cosi Bay, as well as parliamentary villages oversight report recommendations. Um, I'd also urge again the honorable members to just And then we move um, directly to the resolutions. We have three resolutions. The first one being that the Prestige Branch ought to provide updated information on contractors 
and subcontractors that are involved in maintenance work at the parliamentary villages. It further stressed that the full details, such as dates at which projects started and the projected, complete, the projected completion dates with budgets had to be provided. Um, the second one was that the head of prestige must send an update on details experienced um, on projects to the committee by no later than Thursday, 25 February, 2021. Um, the last one was that the department must work on a process to minimize its reliance on consultants to implement its mandate and should rather employ the youth as part of the country's economic restructuring and recovery plan. And that should be all for me on this minutes, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Martinez and honorable members, uh, these minutes, the true reflection of what happened in the portfolio committee on the set date, we can start with the corrections if there are any, and then have a mover to adopt the minutes. I'm moving chair. Thank you, Honorable Franz Galvec. I will second chair. Thank you, Honorable Hicklin. Uh, I think it's only those two sets, Nola. Yes, Chair, correct. It's only those two sets. Okay. Uh, while Nola flights the, the, um, the third uh, report or the updated plan, uh, Honorable Members, if you all, all remember, we had planned that we must um, have public hearings um, and the date that we had set in uh, uh, was that it should be the beginning of March, but when we agreed that we have to extend the date for return submissions to the 28th of February, we agreed on the 15th of March. But when the president extended the level three uh, health protocol restrictions on COVID-19 up to the 15th of March. We felt that no, the 19th of uh, March would be too early for us to go on public hearings. Then we agreed that uh, uh, we will come up with a date. We can even utilize the constant period um, for the public hearings. Uh, written submissions, yeah, we are true with it. The 28th of February, they came and many, they, 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 we have received many. We have also received a request for oral presentation. Yesterday, we sat as the management uh, committee, which came up with this plan that, that uh, Ms. Martinez is going to present uh, to, 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 the, to the members. Thanks, Chair. Um, honorable members, I would like to now present the decision of the management committee of, 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 of this portfolio, which was which sat yesterday and um, decided upon proposed dates for the public hearings. Um, as you may know, honourable members, we, the last day, the last date, or rather the due date for the written submissions, was uh, the twenty eighth of February, and indeed we did receive a, quite a chunk of written submission plus plus uh, minus ninety thousand um, submissions, and we still have about nine point five that arrived after the due date, which we cannot count, unfortunately, because we're after the due date. However, we have encouraged people that have um, uh, submitted after the due date to be on the lookout of, or, or for the dates of the public hearing so that their inputs can also be factored into the public participation process of this bill. So uh, honorable members, if I may start with the yellow, with the yellow part, is it yellow or orange color blind? Um, so we we received the public the, the 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 written submissions. So we are looking at having the final spreadsheet or the master spreadsheet that contains all those report the, a report of all those submissions by the end of this month because of lack of capacity because there's only a few of us who are 
um, capturing this. So Parliament doesn't um, employ a service provider to do data capturing. So that's probably why we're a bit stretched on, on that side. However, we are confident that we will be able to make it on that date. And then, as the chairperson has said, the meetings for oral submissions will now be held from the 24th until the 25th of March um, during this month. This We currently have about 13 organizations as well as individuals in, inclusive um, that have indicated that they would like to come through and present um, their, their submissions or related to, to the portfolio committee. And the men had, had actually decided that we should also do this virtually as we have been doing with our own portfolio committee meetings. Um, then the Menco also took a decision regarding the public hearings rollout to all nine provinces, which should take place between the period 8th of April until 6th of June, 2021. So the approach that we'll be following on this one, honorable members, um, honorable chair and honorable members, is that we will have, or we will go to a province in each and every weekend from the, from the start of this period, 8th of April. So the first province that we have earmarked is Limpopo. So in Limpopo will spend, in fact, in all provinces, um, as I continue with the approach, we'll be targeting four districts. And in those four districts, we'll spend four days, one day in each district. So um, we'll have, as the president has announced, is pronounced on level one, the restrictions are that we can uh, have a hundred people inside a venue. So the proposal was that we could have those hundred people and then have people rotating um, to come through and 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 give their their submissions. Because you'd find that uh, within the hundred, there would only be twenty who are mainly giving their own presentations during public hearings. So hence, then the proposal for a rotation of those people, so that we can maximize public participation. We have also. Uh, spoken to uh, our colleagues um, from from the safety and health environment uh, unit within the organizational wellness in Parliament. They will more than um, they, they, they are more than eager to assist us in this process to ensure that we curb the spread of, of, of coronavirus while we are doing these public hearings. So the first one is Limpopo, um, starting on the Thursday, eighth of April, until the Sunday, eleventh of April, followed by Mpumalanga. And that'll be the following weekend, 1504, 2021, until the 18th of April, um, 2021. After that, that'll be the Northwest, um, 2204, until 2504. And then we carry on again after, I'm not sure if this date is correct. No, this date can't be correct because this is the 22nd. Oh, yes, it is correct because it's four days. So it's the 24th to the 25th will be in the Northwest. And then we go to Gauteng on the 29th of April until the 3rd of May, 2021. The reason for, for the length of this period, honorable members, is that there's a May Day public holiday in between. So the committee will work on the 29th and 30th of April and then break on the 1st of May for, 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 for the May Day. Um, public um, holiday, then we carry on for the next two days, the 2nd and 3rd of May in Gauteng. Then followed, um, that'll be followed by the Free State starting from the 6th of May until the 9th of May. And thereafter KZN, 13th of May until the 16th of May. After that is the Eastern Cape on the 20th of May until the 23rd of May. Um, uh, second last would be the Northern Cape, 27th of May until the 30th of May. And lastly, the Western Cape on the 3rd of June until the 6th of, of June. So um, after this, as per the rules, then we'll need to consider the report um, as the committee, which is in the rules termed as the deliberation by members. So that's what we'll be doing during this period from between the 8th and this um, the 8th of, of June until the 23rd of the sixth month. I've put that period on the honorable members uh, because we we want to give ourselves time to draft a final report of the of the submissions 
um, from the written submissions that we received, the oral submissions that we will also receive, as well as the public hearing. So the committee will then sit and consider a report of those submissions altogether. Thereafter, honorable members will have the formal consideration of the bill clause by clause after the committee has had their, their own deliberations. Um, after that, which is the final step of, 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 of this process, um, we'll be considering and adopting the report of the committee on the expropriation bill, and then we adopt the final version of the actual bill. That should be all from my side, Honorable Chairperson, and I haven't put dates on this one because we need to um, just sit and consider. Actually, I don't want to put dates as yet because we know even these dates that we've put on are actually also dependent upon the change in the wave of the pandemic as well. Uh, I'll pause it right there, Chairperson, uh, back to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Martinez. If I may add on this members on the issue of uh, 100 and allowing people, um, Together with Inez, we were part of the ad hoc um, public hearings. Um, the last one we held them in November, when when the country was in level one, uh, that is during COVID. But at the time, 250 was allowed. But you would find that there are like uh, more than uh, 500 people. Um, in the venue, but to get inside, you'll only have the number that is expected and the number that is allowed uh, due to health protocols. And we'll find that there are people that would like to speak that are outside. And then there was a way that would allow a, a group of 10 to come in to speak and then we allow them to go out. But we always ensured that the number that is inside the hall is only the number that is uh, allowed um, according to health uh, protocols. So that is why you are saying now we will have this hundred, but if outside there are also people that would like to speak, we will then uh, do it in a way that would allow 10 to come in speak, but there is a 10 that has to go out and then do it like that in those groups so that everyone who would like to speak is allowed to speak. Um, I just wanted to emphasize and explain that point. The reason we have four days is because we will then uh, go to four districts in each, um, in each province. Uh, then I then invite honorable members um, to comment on this updated uh, plan that we have. Um, honorable Graham Mare, uh, but I think almost all members should talk on this one. Uh, uh, my first question, uh, do you want to still wait for, for input so can I start? No, yes, yes, yes. Um, Chair, my first question is, is Parliament going to pay for my divorce? Just wanted to check on that because I only see my husband on weekends and for two months to not see my husband or two or three months to not see my husband, I think he'll leave me. Um, <laughs> so, Chair, what I wanted to ask is, um, will the entire committee be expected to attend every single public hearing or will we will we split the com committee so that we do alternate weekends? Um, I'm sure most people will find that, that doing every single weekend is going to be almost impossible. Um, the Northern Cape weekend is an example. It's mine and my husband's birthday. And we have um, a huge stoop tasting in Graf Renet. I've already got people who've booked to come down here. So I, I literally can't do that weekend. And I'm sure other people have got other commitments. So maybe what we need to do is split the committee in half and alternate weekends just to make it um, easier It'll be more affordable for Parliament in the first place, and it'll also be easier for people then to be able to to plan around doing it alternate weekends as opposed to every single weekend. 
Thank you so much. Um, Honorable Matebula, Honorable Higlin, followed by Honorable Ngumalo, Honorable Jobo, I don't oh, Honorable Fanskalvik, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Don't speak in this one. No. Thank you very much, uh, um, Yeah, one needs to uh, appreciate the fact that finally, uh, we are finalizing this particular important uh, national question uh, of uh, engaging with our people and finally uh, getting to resolve the matter of uh, uh, section 25 uh, of our constitution. Chair, however, I just want to check uh, here um, in terms of uh, trying to save and save time and save marriages. Um, that uh, is it not possible, Chair, that uh, instead of us spending four days in one uh, province, uh, we spend only one day? Um, oh. uh, yes. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me, Honorable Matebula. Excuse me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, well, uh, Chair, I just want to check if could it not have been that we are spread to the four different districts that exist in a particular province. Instead of us going to one district, then we move to another and we do the same thing also in another province or in another district, uh, moving all of us to one and all of us to another one. Uh, could not that have been possible for us uh, to, to do it in that way. Um, thank you very much. Um, Honorable Hicklin. Thanks, Chair. Um, my response to Honorable Matabula would be if you have at least four members per political party in a committee, then you can split it where you go to four different districts at once. I don't believe that that is feasible. Uh, there are some people who only have one member, others who have two, so it's not going to work. But I just want to echo what um, Honorable Grandmare said. I really and truly think that it would be beneficial to all of us if we could split it that um, we share the load, so to speak. This is possibly one of the most important bills that's going to come before Parliament. We need to make sure that we have adequate representation, but at the same time, we all have other duties that we have to take care of, not taking into account the toll on our own personal lives. Um, in terms of our constituencies that take us uh, away in any case. It's not feasible for us, in my humble opinion, to be away every single weekend starting at the end of, in the middle of March or beginning of April and ending in June. It just doesn't make sense to me. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hicklin. Um... Honorable Franz Kalvik, Honorable Tring, Honorable Mchobo, Honorable Chobo, Honorable Ngumal, is he still in? Call us, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm told us that long being a little bit so different. I want to make a little bit of 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 Mangabe Sambi, Viglonk, Samba, Vivok, Samuya Wong, Sihole, Minion Chalas, which is Hamba Ningham, and Thomas. Ain't honorable Numalo, eh, honorable Fazgal make. Thank you, honorable chairperson. I feel the pain of the newly wet. <laughs> honorable Numalo. Uh, chairperson, 
as much as we we want to see this program being speed up, I uh, share the same sentiments as the previous member in terms of uh, going out every weekend instead. I propose that we go out for two weekends, skip one weekend and then move on like that. Go for two weekends and then skip one weekend. So at least then we'll get the, uh, the opportunity to, to, uh, to be with our families. Then Chairperson, uh, in terms of uh, 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 splitting the committee, I don't support that motion based on the fact that for one, we've seen it's been done uh, by the ad hoc committee. But if we look at the composition of the ad hoc committee, we'll see there's a lot more members involved in the ad hoc committee than uh, in terms of our own committee. That's for one. For two is uh, there as much as we think that if we split the committee, there will be less expenses. I think there will be more expenses because Parliament then had to provide added security, added staff and all that. And I think it's important for our own staff members to be present at each uh, public hearing to properly capture uh, things and, and, and just for smooth running of, of affairs. Then Chairperson, uh, I think uh, already we have vast areas, especially in terms of your rural provinces. And we need, in terms of uh, our mandate as, as parliamentarians, as well as in terms of proper consultation, in terms of uh, uh, making provision or, or, or for the bill, we need to have sufficient consultation in terms of visiting as much as possible uh, regions. So uh, for us to visit uh, each re uh, uh, four regions per province would be seen as sufficient consultation. We should remember, Chairperson, that we shouldn't open ourselves for litigation uh, uh, when we haven't even uh, finished this this project. So, Chairperson, I would then uh, therefore suggest that we uh, keep our composition as the whole committee to go to each and every uh, region. We stick with the four regions per province. We stick to the four days per, uh, per province and we just skip one weekend and then uh, uh, move to for two weekends again out to other provinces. I thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I, <clears throat> I was going to indicate that if one looks at the uh, ad hoc committee in section 25, Certainly what they did was that they actually broke up the, the provinces into uh, two groups. So you had two groups that were covering the, uh, the nine provinces together with the districts. So I think that, that if we are able to do that, uh, it would, it would uh, one, I think we'd be able to complete in a shorter period of time. So that's where, this, that's where the saving of costs comes in. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I do not think that it will be more expensive. Actually, I think it will be a, a saving uh, if we actually have uh, two, two groups. Um, I think the, the other possibility also to look at is to perhaps in some of your smaller provinces where the districts are not that far apart if at all possible, and I know that logistics may not render this possible, but if at all possible to have more than one meeting um, per day uh, where, where, that, where that is possible. So to have a, an early start, maybe nine o'clock or so in the morning, um, and then uh, perhaps a break uh, from 12 to one, and then travel to the next meeting at about maybe two o'clock um, for the next meeting, 
Uh, and I know sometimes that can also be a stretch, but where possible, that also reduces the, the time so that we are not away from, uh, from family uh, for uh, lengthy periods of time. Thank you, Jim. Honorable Mjobo. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I'd like to align myself with the with Honorable Fanskaldvik, um, special on the issue of not splitting. Uh, I think as a as as public works, that one will will help us, and uh, the issue of saving marriage, Chairperson, saving marriage. Um, Um, keep just one week uh, so that I must have, I must sit with Mike, please. It's very important. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, honorable members. Um, one, honorable members, the I think Honorable Franz Kalvik explained the, the issue of uh, the ad hoc committee, its composition as compared to the composition of our portfolio committee in terms of the number, in terms of the size. Even in terms of the staff that was supporting ad hoc committee. Uh, Honorable Trink was also part of that. He knows that he, we we had uh, so many committee secretaries, so many support coming from departments. For example, for public works, uh, Miss Inez was there. There was the committee secretary from uh, agriculture and rural development other than those that were tasked with the job of being the secretary of the ad hoc committee. So it's going to be a challenge if we say we split the group. What I would propose is that, in fact, what Honorable Van Skalvik said, I think it is closer to what we may try, uh, but Honorable, the youngest one to wait is honor is honorable woman. Honorable woman had his wedding only last year and he invited us, but due to COVID-19 regulations, we could not honor. Uh, I think others they've been married for a long time, but we support that honorable uh, grandma Rebma celebrate uh, her birthday and the one of uh, her husband uh, in that weekend. But what we can do, honorable members, is to take three provinces, take a break in one weekend, take another three provinces, and then take a break, take another three provinces, then we would finish uh, the nine provinces. But also, if honorable Grand Murray is not going to attend in that particular um, uh, hearing. She can then, because at least you are two, but all other parties, they're supposed to have alternates <clears throat> in, in, in the committee, someone who is not voting, but an alternate in the committee. So if Honorable Graham won't be part of that, she may then say, Honorable Hicklin, I'm not going to be part of in this weekend. Can you then ensure that you attend? Just like uh, my fellow um, um, uh, members from my own party, if there's someone who's not going to attend, that person indicates and then others attend. Those that have alternates, they indicate early, I'm not going to attend, but the alternate, the alternate must be the same one who, who is known by the committee that this person is an alternate to this uh, uh, committee, as we all know that we have alternates. 
but for you to rest and, and uh, meet the family, we're allowing that after three provinces, there must be a break uh, that we can't, we can't go. But also remember you took an oath, uh, honorable members, you allowed uh, South Africans to vote for you to be their public rep. And then when a call is made of such an important bill that we know that all South Africans are looking at this bill, the, the, um, the overwhelming um, um, response that we have seen in, in the written submissions, it shows that uh, South Africans, they really want to see this bill, they want to engage in this bill. We will, we will ensure that um, when we have finalized the dates, we will communicate with you so that uh, you campaign in your constituencies that people attend the, the hearing. So Nola, it would be um, Limpompo, Pumalanga and, and, um, and Northwest, then we take a break. Gauteng Free State, uh, it's Gauteng Free State and KZN, we take a break. Eastern Cape, Northern Cape and Western Cape, we take a break. Um, so we must try to get to fit a, a, and plan our family programs according to that plan. But once we are true with them, um, with the, with the actual dates, Nola will bring it back and, and, and then we, we do that. Uh, having been part of the public hearings again, um, honorable members, I've seen uh, uh, the way the, the, the security, the, the health uh, officials that have to ensure them that we adhere to, to health protocols the, again, the, um, the staff to ensure that the, um, the registration occurs, it's a lot of people. So the moment we have two groups, that means you are doubling that. So that means also doubling the budget. So I think we must take this one, we must be one group, but we must alternate, but we must also ensure that our families uh, don't feel that we have rejected them. Uh, but I believe that uh, uh, Honorable uh, Mjobo, Honorable Shabalala, Honorable Matebula, uh, and myself, I know those that uh, they don't, they are not committed to any spouse, those four that <laughs> Joking with honorable members, so yeah, they can tell us that they please, are husbands please, <laughs> and their spouses. Please, <laughs> please, please. They must be like honorable Mumalo and say that we can go even for a week. But no, no, uh, thank you, can't you, be Chair, uh, uh, Chair, we will all be divorced and then we will have to go into one shelter together, Chair. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, anything, uh, Ms. Martinez, uh, that you would like to add? No, Chairperson, thank you very much. You've largely covered me. Uh, before your ruling, Honorable Chair, I was ready to take you to a rule that takes us to a vote on this matter until I calculated that it's four against, it was about five against three members who didn't want to, who didn't want to go all together as a committee. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Okay, thank you, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, apparently, Honorable Graham, um, the weekend uh, now is free. The weekend, we uh, hoping that she will enjoy herself and 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 her husband will also enjoy himself, and they will enjoy themselves together. Uh, thank you, honorable uh, members. <laughs> I, I think Chair, you must uh, you know find a, a way to put your words, Chair. Oh, <laughs> like <laughs> with apologies. reference to with, with reference to honorable claim, I think apologies, apologies, apologies. <laughs> and we know that on that on that particular weekend also it would be honorable Hicklin's uh, wife's birthday. So all the best in advance to the spouses of our honorable members. 
uh, in those celebrations. Um, honorable members, our next meeting now will be next Wednesday. And we'll also uh, look at the dates in which we will invite uh, people for oral presentation. If there are many that have requested, we'll group them into two groups, maybe for four hours, take one group, and then for maybe next day, take another, an another group. We'll also ensure that there is time uh, allocated to each group for presentation, uh, and we'll ensure that everyone has the presentation that they will be doing. Thank you again, honorable members, for your progressive uh, input that you always do in this committee. Uh, let me remind you again, honorable members, COVID is still out there. Let's take care, let's stay safe, let's stay indoors, uh, wear the mask all the time. And let's join the department and all the people out there that are fighting gender-based violence and femicide in our country. It is a duty for all of us to ensure that this country is free from crime, that women and children of this country are not afraid to walk on the streets. They are not afraid to go to their homes because they are staying with the abuser. They are not afraid to go to their churches because the pastor or the reverend is the abuser. They are not afraid to go to work because the boss or the immediate supervisor is an abuser. It's a fight that we all have to join hands in winning to ensure that our kids, our grandkids live in a free society. Thank you again, honorable members. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Have a good week. Thank you for your inputs. Bye -bye. See you in the plenary, honorable members. 100% chair. Okay.